Hello YouTubers. Most all of you who are watching this video who have a lawn tractor with a tough Torx hydrostatic transmission eventually will recognize this sound when attempting to go forward or reverse. You will also recognize that the tractor will perform fine initially. Then after about 10 to 20 minutes it may slow down as it makes that noise and refuse to climb a hill or maybe not want to move at all. My hope is that you will follow the example in this video series before your tractor begins to exhibit these symptoms. John Deere states that this transmission is unserviceable. However, this video series will show you how to remove the transmission and change the oil and filter too if you wish which is recommended at least every 200 hours of service. So why do I need to remove the transmission just to change the transmission oil? Because unlike other brands like this Troy built, which have their battery under the seat, John Deere chose to move their battery to the engine compartment, thereby closing off access to the top of the transmission by simply removing the battery. Because of this, you will not be able to access the transmission filler plug without first removing the transmission. Following these instructions may help with your lawn tractor symptoms, but if not, I have a plan B secret weapon I'll share with you at the end of this series that may spare you lots of grief and a lot of money. So let's get after it. Begin by locking the parking brake. This is not so much a safety issue per se, as it merely relieves tension on the drive belt. Notice the belt goes inside these guides. This plate will need to be removed and I'll show you how shortly. Underneath the tractor we'll be able to see a guide bar for the drive belt. You will note that although the belt goes around the pulley on top of the transmission, the belt is sandwiched between the plate and the guide bar. Let's remove the guide bar first. Back up top, take your socket or a wrench and loosen the guide bar nut. If you note the far side of the guide bar, you'll see it bobbing up and down. Let me show you why. The right side of this guide bar has nothing to hold it in place. No nut, no threads. It's merely held there by the tension of the nut on the left side. Once removed, I replace the nut onto the bar for safekeeping. Pick up the plate in the rear first, then slide it rearward like this. Next, release the parking brake so the linkage can be disconnected. On the left side of the tractor, press down on this circlip until the center part pivots downward, then pull the clip outward to remove. Lift and pivot the parking brake linkage, then drop it down. You may want to cable tie this linkage up out of the way. While we are on this side of the tractor, loosen and remove the bolt on this brace. Move to the right side of the tractor and remove that same brace bolt on this side. Unplug this electrical connector, noting that the white wire is on the left. This connection cuts power to the blades when the tractor is in reverse. This washer can be pried off of the drive disconnect arm using a flat bladed screwdriver. It really helps to have an extendable magnet on hand to grab the washer as it falls. Lift the linkage from the drive disconnect arm, then remove the rod like this. The forward and reverse linkage rod is removed in a similar fashion.
I found that this rod was jammed against the frame and needed to be removed by squeezing it with my slip joint pliers. Begin removal of the axle bolts. The fourth axle bolt will be left in place until I can reposition the tractor. Now I may be working on this project for a few days and as such I want the tractor out of my way as well as positioned properly under a floor joist while using my chain hoist. The last of the four axle bolts is removed. Locating a strong floor joist cross member, I securely wrapped a strap around it then attached my chain hoist. A second strap was looped around the rear frame plate then hooked to the chain hoist. I don't like that the abrasive strap is pulling against the body and the paint, so I fashioned a standoff using three pieces of 2x4 like this. Now there's plenty of clearance. One last check is performed to ensure no connections have been missed. While rolling out the assembly, be careful of the plastic blades on the cooling fan. The transmission can now easily be rolled outside for cleaning. These were the tools I used for the cleanup, as well as these degreasers and spray cleaners. I'm going to need to remove this drain plug, but it's blocked by the cooling fan. Using my snap ring pliers, the pulley snap ring is removed. The drop belt pulley is lifted off, paying attention to its orientation. The cooling fan can now be removed, being careful not to lose the washer, shown here. Two splined hex head spacers are used to elevate the fan above the surrounding case. These will be used later with our drill to purge air from the system. The transmission is flipped over and the underside cleaned. I was able to locate the transmission model here, as well as here. This information is instrumental when ordering a filter or other parts. Next, I'll drain the old oil by first removing this drain plug. Using a flat bladed screwdriver and a small hammer, I carefully begin to tap upwards around the circumference of the plug. I'm especially careful noting that this plug has some small cracks showing near the center and I don't have a replacement in case I damage it. Underneath the drain plug is the first of two magnets used to capture small metal fragments. Remove the metal base as shown and clean this magnet thoroughly. Once this project is complete, the magnet will be placed back into the drain hole like this. Practice placing your drain pan under the transmission before flipping the assembly upside down. 
Advanced planning will ensure that the braces don't hit and cause the drain pan to flip over. Rotate the axle so that the remainder of the old fluid can be drained. You may want to use wheel chocks while this drainage completes if you're going to leave this unattended. Once all the oil has drained, remove the wheel chocks and quickly rotate the axle like this. If your plans call for draining and replacing only the oil, then skip ahead to part two in this series where we show the oil being replaced. Otherwise, the drain plug may now be temporarily reinstalled. I found that these safety jack stands worked great in holding the axle secure for this next step, removal of the lower case half. The center two bolts are longer than the others and with each long bolt I remove, I'm using a sharpie to mark the location. This illustrates the difference in the bolt lengths around the edge versus the two in the center. Once all the case bolts are removed, carefully take a large flat bladed screwdriver and begin to leverage the lower case half loose using these pry points located around the outer edge. If, while prying upward, the case refuses to come apart, don't force it. Work along the remaining pry points until the halves are separated. Once loose, lift straight up on the lower case half. I want to draw your attention to the second of the two magnets as well as the 19 year old filter which is nasty. Removing the lower case half also affords you the opportunity to examine the gear teeth for wear or breakage. Just like the first magnet, you can see how this one is covered in metal shavings. Also note that this magnet does not have a metal base to hold it, rather it fits down into a receptacle molded into the case. Now cleaned, the magnet is put back in place and we continue on.